Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Wayfair stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Wayfair is an e-commerce company that sells furniture and home goods. The company is headquartered in Boston, Massachusetts and was founded in 2002. It went public in 2014 and currently trades on the NASDAQ. It was formerly known as CSN Stores. Their digital platform offers 14 million items for more than 11,000 global suppliers. It has offices and warehouses throughout the US, also in Canada, Germany, Ireland, and the UK. The company operates five branded retail websites, the main Wayfair site, Joss and Main, All Modern, Birch Lane, and Paragold. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company. 33 billion market cap, they're trading at 318 a share, and they have 104 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they had their first positive free cash flow year in 2020, over $1 billion. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. They had their first positive net income year in 2020 also at 185 million. Revenue is a sales for the company and their sales grow a lot from 4.7 billion all the way up to 14 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And the difference is the gross profit and their gross profit grows each year from 1.1 billion to 4.1 billion. Below that is operating expenses and then operating income. And they had their first positive operating income year in 2020. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. That was 146 million. Then other income and expenses, which is pretty small. Below that is pre-tax income, then their taxes. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which was positive in 2020, negative in prior years. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. They did have positive operating cash flow every year except 2019. But in 2017 and 18, it was pretty small. It was a really big number in 2020, 1.4 billion. And I expect this number to get even bigger in the following years. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they did have negative free cash flow in prior years. So they've been issuing debt to run their business. They issued 400 million in 2017, 560 million, 930 million, and 2.2 billion. They did pay down 1.2 billion of debt in 2020. Since they generated so much free cash flow in 2020, they bought back $380 million of stock. When a company buys back stock, this decreases the shares outstanding, making your shares more valuable. Let's look at the capital structure. Negative $1.1 billion of equity. That means their liabilities are $1.1 billion more than their assets. $3.6 billion of debt. So their 100% debt, 0% equity. Their net debt is $1 billion. Net debt is total debt minus cash on balance sheet. Their WAC is 10.74%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 45 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $37 billion. We divide that by 104 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of 361. They're trading at 318, so they're trading at a 12% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a bit higher than me. They're at 412 a share, so they're saying the stock is 23% undervalued. 20 analysts priced this stock in the past three months. The average price target is 341. The low is 200, the high is 450. This is the stock price in the last five years. It looks like in the March 2020 stock market crash, it really dipped low the stock, and you could have got it a great value. If you bought it down here, you could have made a huge return. It looks like the stock is pretty close to its all-time high. It looks like its all-time high was around 340. If you were smart enough to buy the stock in 2017, 18, and 19, when they were generating negative free cash flow, you could have been paid really well. So the company is definitely moving in the right direction. $1 billion of free cash flow is a pretty big number. 
I don't think they're going to have negative free cash flow again. They have a really high beta, 3.24, so the stock moves more than three times the market. It's very volatile. The stock has gone up 200% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 49%. The 52-week low was 98, the high was 369. And the stock is trading above its 200-day, but below its 50-day moving average. About 1 to 1.8 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 103 million shares outstanding, 68 million are on float. And they have a really high short percentage, over 19% of the shares on float are shorted. In the past year, this stock has gone up 200%, while its industry went up 43%, and the market 61%. In the past 3 years and 5 years, this stock has gone up a lot more than its industry and the market. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to grow 42%, while its industry grows 24%, and the market grows 18%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to grow 14%, its industry 17%, and the market 10%. In the past 5 years, their annual earnings decreased 26%, while the industry increased 24%, and the market increased 12%. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd, you'd have $84,000 today. That's a 38% annual return. When you look at this chart, it seems so easy. Why didn't I just invest in this company and hold out? But even if I told you this is a great stock and you put a few thousand dollars into it, I bet you would have sold after a year with a loss. Even if you waited two years, you probably would have made no money. A lot of people have a hard time waiting because after a year or two or even three, if the stock doesn't go up, they think it will never go up. Even if you held out to over here, you'd be at $30,000. Then during the March crash, you would have been below your $10,000. You probably would have been really upset. But if you kept holding on, you'd be at over $80,000 today. You would have got paid really well. So if you find a good stock, you just got to hold on and wait because you never know when it's going to go up. You need to ride out the ups and downs. The founders of the company both own 13% each, then FMR 10.5%, then Bailey Gifford, then Vanguard. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE is 33, the median is 22.5. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 178.6. So investors are paying $178 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is 2.3, so they're doing better than the median average. They have negative equity, so we can't look at the price to book. Same thing with return on invested capital. They have negative equity, so we can't look at the ROIC. Their interest coverage ratio is 2.5. We can't look at the ROE since they have negative equity. Their current ratio is 1.4, so they can cover their current liabilities 1.4 times. And their current assets are $2.6 billion of cash and $170 million of receivables. The company does seem to be well capitalized. They had over $1 billion of free cash flow, $880 million of working capital. So they have nearly $2 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 10 companies in the same industry as Wayfair. And if Wayfair has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE because they do have low earnings relative to their market cap. They're doing really well in price to sales. We can't look at their price to book. They do have a good current ratio. It is a little lower than average though. We can't look at their ROE. They're 100% debt. They are a decent sized company, 33 billion market cap, but much smaller than average because Amazon is in this industry and they're a massive company. Of course, they do not pay a dividend because they just started generating money. So to summarize, I have them trading at 12% discount. This company is growing at a really rapid pace. I think this is a great long-term hold. I rank their free cash flows 8 out of 10, their revenue 10 out of 10, and their ratios 3 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.